Hi everyone, this is Dr. Mike, host of the free iTunes podcast, Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike. But that's not why I'm here today. This is another Saving Savvy episode, this time looking at setting up a very inexpensive but complete kitchen. Now the reason I'm doing this show is because in my professional life I talk to a lot of people. And lately I've been seeing a sad trend, and I think it's probably related to the economic stressors out there. I'm seeing a lot of couples breaking up, and usually the guy goes and moves into an apartment someplace, and maybe has a few dollars and buys a TV and a bed and a few other things. And there's typically not a lot of money left over for uh, setting up a kitchen, so they go out and they eat and spend a lot of money. Well, you can set up a kitchen very inexpensively, and I'm going to show you how, but first let's look at some simple rules. The first thing to remember is that things don't have to match. In fact, you could have an aluminum pot and a stainless steel pot. It doesn't make any difference as long as they're the right sizes. The other thing to remember is that you want to go to friends and families and, or family and ask for their cast-offs. Now, we're not looking at their junk, so if they have a pot where that everything burns and you don't want that pot either, however, they might have a lot of extra stuff they're willing to give you and it's going to save you quite a bit of money. Don't be afraid to shop resale. It could be Goodwill or a secondhand store or a garage sale. You're going to find a lot of stuff there. People are constantly updating and throwing out kitchen stuff, perfectly good stuff for next to nothing. And you also may want to check out some inexpensive stores like Walgreens or a dollar store. But remember, those stores are only good for certain things. So they're great for things like measuring cups or maybe uh, measuring spoons, but they're not so good for things like pots and pans. They're just too cheap there and they're not going to serve you well. Lastly, I would say you want to do this within one weekend, you know, in other words, gather all the stuff together, or maybe two at the most. If you spend too much time, you're never going to complete the job, and you're not going to have the right tools necessary, and you're just not going to cook at home. So let's go in the kitchen and let's get started. Okay, this is what you're going to need for a very basic kitchen, but this will be a full function kitchen, one that will allow you to make real food, not just uh, to reheat stuff. So the first thing are some pots and pans. You're going to need a large pot, uh, four to six quarts. This one happens to be five quarts. A medium pot, two or three quarts. This one happens to be two quarts. And a frying pan, 10 or 12 inches. This one happens to be a 12 inch frying pan. It doesn't make any difference if the pots and pans match, but they need to be heavy in construction and sturdy and they need to have thick bottoms so you don't want a thin bottom otherwise you're going to burn food. You'll also need some sort of covers for those pans. Um, this is a universal cover that you can get at any big box store but hopefully your pots and pans will have some covers with them. Again they don't necessarily have to match, they just sort of have to fit. You're also going to need some basic utensils. So here we have a slotted spoon, which you can use for many things, a pancake turner, again useful for turning a lot of things other than pancakes, a pair of tongs for pulling stuff out of hot water or flipping stuff around, a rubber silicon spatula. I like the silicon ones because they tem tend to be pretty temperature resistant. Um, a ladle for pulling like soup or spaghetti sauce or something out of a pot and a can opener and a potato peeler. Now I actually went to a dollar store, the Dollar Tree, and I bought a can opener and potato peeler there just for this little exercise because I thought they would be terrible and, and I wanted to be able to tell you to not buy them, but they actually worked out just fine. But I would say the construction of these cheap ones will probably not last as long as a brand name like Swing Away or something like that or OXO. But, uh, you know, if you're really pinched for money, I think you could probably buy one at the dollar store and you'll get away with using it for a while. You'll also need some sort of a strainer or colander for draining pasta and other things. This might be a gadget that sits in your pot or just a cheap strainer or a big colander. I just have this little gadget here which would work for one or two people. Now these types of items are really very cheap especially if you go to the dollar store so you might find that there are other things that you want that I haven't mentioned so maybe in your life you really need a corkscrew or a potato masher or a whisk or something like that so if you see something that you really think you're going to use go out and buy it I mean it's just going to be a dollar or so more so a few extra items won't kind of break the bank. You'll also need some knives, and this is really important. You don't need a lot of knives, you basically need just two. A large knife and a small knife. This large knife is called a French chef's knife, 
Its uh, blade is 8 inches long, which is the standard for these types of knives. That's what most people would buy. And you can see it sort of looks like a triangle with the bottom being sort of curved. And this knife you're going to use probably about 90% of the time when cooking. Um, for jobs that are too small for the big knife, you need a paring knife. Uh, paring knives typically are between 3 and 4 inches. That's the standard size. And they're just little small knives for small jobs. Now in between you see something that's very important. This is a sharpener, just a manual sharpener. This particular one is called an AccuSharp. I got it at Ace Hardware for under $10. And every time I go to cook something, I run that sharpener over the knives a couple of times and then rinse the knives off just in case there's any little metal filings or whatever. And my knives are always, always very sharp and really ready to go. So how much do you need to spend on knives? Well, certainly, if you spent a couple hundred bucks on a chef's knife, you'd have a great instrument, but you're probably not going to do that. So if you wanted to get a good chef's knife and you were willing to go online, the Torinox, that's the Swiss Army people, sell an 8 inch uh, chef's knife for about 30 bucks. Just Google for it and you'll find it. If you don't want to go online or you want to spend a little less, just go to your big box store and look at their chef's knives and look at their uh, paring knives and pick some that feel good in your hand. Now I particularly like the brands Chicago Cutlery and um, Henkel's International. Those are kind of cheaper brands that you find at these kinds of stores. I think they're a little bit better quality than some of the other brands, but you know, do whatever you want to do there. Now just to show you that uh, these knives here are actually none of those. These are actually from a restaurant supply store. This chef knife was about eight dollars and this three and a half inch or three and a quarter inch paring knife was I think just like a little bit over three dollars. And we use these all the time. They work fantastic. Um, again, we kind of sharpen them each time we use them. And they're actually many years old, so they've held up very well. So that's another option. If you don't like the chef knife, there is another very popular general purpose knife. It's called a Santoku knife. Typically, the average length for that is about seven inches blade. And uh, this is just an example of one of those. So either a Santoku or a chef's knife, if someone is willing to give you one from their collection, hey, that's great. You'll be saving some money. Of course, you'll need a cutting board. Never cut on a plate or on the countertop. You'll either ruin the uh, cutting surface or the knife or probably both. Cutting boards are cheap. This is about the minimum size that I would recommend. I think this is probably about 12 by 18 inches. Anything smaller and the vegetables are just flying all over the place. Uh, a little bit bigger would be fine too. You can get either wood or plastic. I tend to like plastic just because I can throw it in the dishwasher, but wood is was also fine. Um, and what you really want to do is to make sure that you treat this cutting board in a sanitary way. So certainly you're going to wash it when you're done using it. But also, if you cut something like raw meat, you want to thoroughly wash the cutting board, the knife, and your hands before you move on to the next cooking step. Some sort of a bowl, like a utility bowl, is really, really important. Um, this is just a medium to uh, quart size bowl. I use this for everything from pancakes to uh, transporting vegetables to the pot. Uh, this particular one is, I think, from Tupperware, but there's a million different ones out there. You might want to get one that's uh, microwavable or one that's uh, stainless steel. The stainless steel is durable, so you kind of have the two opposite ends over there. Um, and certainly, if you can get a hold of a set of these bowls, like a one, a two, and a three quart bowl, that's even better. But at least one, comma, two or three quart bowl is what you want. Uh, one thing that a lot of people forget about is some sort of a measuring system and even if you're not going to do scratch cooking just about anything that you need or that you're going to cook from a box or uh, some other sort of uh, mix is going to require measuring. Now believe it or not you can get away with just one one cup measure and just your regular silverware. Now people are probably shrieking out there that that's not the case, but I'll tell you that it is. This is kind of what I use when I go camping and I cook all sorts of stuff. I've even made a birthday cake camping once uh, for my son, and so I'm telling you, you can do it. Uh, in fact, what you do is, let's say this is a dry cup, but let's say it calls for a half a cup of milk. You just pour milk halfway up and kind of eyeball it, pour it in. Let's say it calls for a quarter teaspoon of salt of the recipe. You just kind of eyeball a quarter teaspoon in your teaspoon and dump it in, and that really is going to work fine. Now, with that said, if you're serious about cooking, 
again go to the dollar store because for a buck each you can get a wet measuring cup a nested dry set of cups for dry ingredients and a nested uh, set of actual accurate measuring spoons and your results will be better but in a pinch you at least want what I'm showing you here um, even if you plan on uh, not baking you're going to need some bakeware but it doesn't mean that you need a lot you're going to need some sort of a flat sheet either a cookie sheet or a jelly roll pan and this one's a little small I probably get one a little bit bigger and some sort of a baking pan with high sides this is a 9 by 9 little square pan that we use all the time for everything and these pans can be used from everything from baking to broiling however if you're going to do something like bake some chicken or broil some fish or whatever I would tend to line the pan with aluminum foil it's going to make your cleanup ten times easier you're also going to need some setup, some dishes basically you're going to need a large plate a smaller plate like a bread plate a big bowl that you can use from everything from cereal to soups and also um, you're going to need some sort of a mug I like these little 12 ounce mugs that uh, you could probably pick up at anyone's house there's probably tons of people are always trying to get rid of these things so they're glad to give them to you now things don't have to match here but I think if you can get stuff that's microwavable you'll be happier just to reheat stuff in the microwave if you have one um, it, with that said uh, the minimum that you're going to want even if you're just cooking for one are two complete sets and of course don't forget the silverware I think uh, you'll be better off with four complete sets and you might want to even if you have a little extra cash mosey down to the big box stores like Walmart or Target or whatever uh, they often have these um, kind of sets of four with everything again not including the silverware but the mugs and everything else and often there's one model or one color that's on clearance and you could often get the complete set be for between twenty and thirty dollars but if you don't want to spend that money ask people people always have this kind of stuff that they're really happy to get rid of You'll also need some uh, basic stuff that people often forget. Get a pack of dish towels. Really, really worth it. A thousand and one uses. You're going to need uh, some sort of thing to wash dishes with, either a dishcloth or a sponge. I like these little nylon brushes, um, but whatever you get, that's fine. You can even use an old rag if you want. You'll need some sort of storage, either a little storage container or baggies, or hopefully both and aluminum foil has a thousand one uses you definitely want to get some of that um, and uh, the little thicker the thicker stuff is a little bit better than the thin stuff that you can get at some places don't forget you'll need a hot pad or um, uh, one of those uh, oven mitts or hopefully both uh, these are well worn as you can see because we use them all the time but the, they'll really save your fingers and you'll have a lot of uh, less accidents if you just spend a few bucks on those or get some junky ones that someone's getting rid of naturally if you're uh, new or even old to cooking you're going to need recipes and you can get a lot of recipes off the internet I would strongly advise printing them up and not taking the computer into the kitchen uh, kitchens and computers don't necessarily mix very well and you don't want to damage your computer or get it all greasy and if you find that you like particular recipes save them put them in a little folder someplace so you can go back to them later now for very little money you could buy a general cookbook which is going to give you a lot more information than just some simple recipes and if you're feeling flush or maybe uh, you wait a while and decide to get one of these I would recommend Better Homes and Gardens or Betty Crocker uh, for the very simple reason that those cookbooks have been around forever their ingredients tend to be pretty basic and the results tend to be pretty good if you're going the route of a cookbook definitely get a hardcover one that lays flat well there you have it a basic kitchen setup and as you can see it's not very expensive but very very capable now you may need to add a thing or two for your own particular needs so for instance I would need some sort of a device to make coffee so think about that and add that as needed anyways give my podcast a listen if you have some time it's free and I put a lot of work into that um, and I think it's very informative otherwise have a great day hi everyone this is Dr. Mike host of the free iTunes podcast Psychiatric Secrets Revealed with Dr. Mike mm -hmm. oh thank you I just got a muffin.